Hey there YouTube and welcome to Ask a Maestro. Today's question comes from all the way back on the very first Ask a Maestro video, and it comes from Isabel Hernandez Cata, who asks, What is the point of the orchestra seating system? Before we get to the point of the orchestral seating system, let's talk about what the seating system is in the first place. Now, in this video, I'm going to describe the way that the seating works in a large, full-time professional orchestra, like the very one that I used to work at. There are essentially two systems going on at the same time. The system that works in the woodwinds, brass, and percussion section, and then there's the system in the strings. So let's start with the wind players, and we will take as an example the flute section. Now most pieces of music for orchestra will have two or three flutes, and most orchestras will employ three or four flute players, and each of those players has a specific role. There's the principal flute, the associate principal flute, the second flute, and the piccolo player. So let's talk about the principal flute and the associate principal flute. What is the difference between these two players? Well, the principal flute is the official leader of the section, and he or she helps to assign the parts to the rest of the section and will play the majority of the first flute parts. The associate principal also plays first flute parts, but the principal player will play the parts with major solos on them. Let's say, for example, that an orchestra is playing Maurice Ravel's Daphnis and Chloe Suite Number no. 2 which has a big flute solo. 99 times out of 100, the principal flute player will take this solo for him or herself. But let's say that on the first half of the concert, the orchestra is playing Tchaikovsky's first piano concerto, which also has a big flute solo. Well, the principal player may choose to play that piece him or herself, or he or she may assign that part to the associate principal flute player. And usually this is how the principal and the associate principal will divide up the work. The principal will play the major work on the second half of the concert, the associate principal will play the overture and the concerto on the first half of the concert. Then we have the second player. Now the second player is going to the grand majority of the time, play the second parts. Then we have the piccolo player, and the piccolo player is representative of the auxiliary players in each of the sections. So in the flutes you have the piccolo, in the oboes you have the English horn, in the clarinets you have the bass clarinet, and in the bassoons you have the contrabassoon. Those players will play all of the parts written for those auxiliary instruments, but they are also expected to play the actual instruments of their section. And in real life, people sub in and out for each other. Like if you have a piccolo player who is going to be out of town for a week, the associate principal might swing over to the piccolo chair for a week. In the strings, it's rather different. This is because you have so many more players and so many fewer parts. Now, if you're wondering why there are so many string players per part, well, we've got a video about that. So in a string section where you have perhaps 20 violins all playing the same part, how do you decide who sits where? Well, in each of the string sections, as in each of the wind sections, there are people who are designated as the principals. And in fact, there's usually two or three, sometimes even four. You might have a principal second violin, an associate principal second violin, and an assistant principal second violin. And those people will occupy the front three chairs. Now, why do we have so many officers in the front of the string sections? Well, this is because it's really a lot of work to be the principal player in a string section. The brunt of the job is bowing the string parts, which means that you decide where every down and up bow goes in a piece of music. The principal string players are also responsible, in large part, for the interpretation of their section. Because you might have 15 different opinions, and you probably will, about should we use less bow, more bow, play at the tip, play at the frog, and one person in the end has to make that decision, and that will be the principal player in the section. Okay, now we know that there are many, many other players sitting in the sections. How do they end up sitting where they do? Well, in most orchestras these days, they work on a system called seating rotation. So from concert to concert, sometimes from piece to piece, they will move throughout the section, from the back to the front, from the inside to the outside, and they will move in and out of the orchestra. They won't necessarily play on every piece or on every concert. There are several reasons for this. Most of the times, the strings are bearing the greatest burden of the physical work. They probably have a hundred notes to every note in the trumpet, sometimes a thousand notes. And that does, of course, give physical strain and wear and tear on the muscles in the body. So in order to maximize musicians' health and well-being, they are rotated out of the orchestra so that they will have a week off or a lighter week. Now I should say about the quote-unquote rank-and-file string players, this is really the living, breathing heart of the orchestra. And the extent to which they feel that they are part of the collective unit, and the extent to which they are encouraged to play out 
and to play with enthusiasm and gusto is really the difference between a great orchestra and a mediocre orchestra. So in the end, the point of the orchestral seating system is to share the burden of the responsibilities for interpretation and execution, to make sure that people have a healthy lifestyle where they're not playing beyond the capabilities of their own bodies, to have consistency about leadership in the sections, and to have variety in the geographic location and the human interactions throughout the section. Anyway, YouTube, that's it for this episode of Ask a Maestro. Thank you, Isabel hernandez Cata, for your excellent question. Please keep the questions coming in the comments, on the Facebook page, on Twitter. Feel free to like this video and to subscribe to the channel. And until next time, go play an instrument or sing a song. And until then, goodbye everyone.